الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي الاحباب as we were discussing the importance of akhlaq and that it has to do with all the mannerisms and activities of a believer of the mu'min akhlaq extends to all of our activities and is a part of our iman and that righteous akhlaq is doing good deeds is being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilling his commands because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to only that which is good and that those things which are prohibited by Allah azza wa jal they make up the akhlaq madhmuma meaning the manners or mannerisms which are sinful and disliked Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-kareem ya ayyuhal ladina amanu la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa an yakunu khairum minhum ولا نساء من نساء عسى ان يكن خيرا منهن ولا تلمزوا انفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالالقاب باسم الاسم الفسوق بعد الايمان ومن لم يتوب فاولئك هم الظالمون الله سبحانه وتعالى says in Surah Al-Hujurat, Ayat 11, He Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, O you, believe, o you who believe, let not one people laugh at another. Perchance they may be better than them. Nor let women laugh at other women. Perchance they may be better than them. And do not find fault with your own people. Nor call one another by nicknames evil is a bad name after faith and whoever does not turn these it is that are the unjust meaning that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased that we ridicule one another and that we think and believe that we're better than one another regardless of whether that's for ra- with regards to race racial superiority or tribal superiority or nationality or whatever the case may be the many means that we have of belittling one another and trying to raise ourselves up to status to a status which is not considered righteous in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal that none of those reasons is sufficient to belittle one another and this is a type of fusuk a type of wickedness after receiving faith so the person who has these either these beliefs or articulates these uh articulates superiority over others and ridicules others that this is a weakening of their faith this takes away from your iman because your iman fluctuates your iman goes up with obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal and it goes down with disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal and ridiculing people is a major sin and it is one of those things which decreases a person's iman and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said يا ايها الذين امنوا اجتنبوا كثير من الظن ان بعض الظن اثم ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتاب بعضكم بعضا اي يحب احدكم ان ياكل لحم اخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله ان الله تواب رحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the ayat after the one we already mentioned in surah al hujurat he says, O oh, you who believe, beware uh, much suspicion. 
For surely suspicion in some cases is a sin. And do not spy, nor let some of you backbite others. Does, don't you dislike that you eat the flesh of your dead brother? Or doesn't one of you dislike that he eats the flesh of his dead brother? But you rather you abhor it. And be careful of your duty to Allah, meaning a taqullah Surely Allah is off returning, most merciful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful to us because although we commit these wicked sins, we can still return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Tawbah. We can still return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His mercy. And along with that, it shows us the sinfulness of being suspicious of one another and not verifying the news when we hear things about one another. For example, how many individuals, especially when people are involved in calling to good, calling to righteousness, calling to kitab wa sunnah, that they are, they will face many, uh, a lot of opposition. And they will face many enemies, people outside the religion and people within the religion who dislike what they have to say, who disagree with what they have to say, and will attack them in their character and their honor. And spread suspicion. And this is the wickedness we have to be careful of, is being cautious of being, when we hear something about an individual or about people, that we do not just jump and race and rush to spread this news. Because this is one of the major sins, especially if the person is incorrect in spreading wickedness. And especially so if their intention is to just spread wickedness. And I recall a situation where once I was doing some lectures in some masajid and a particular individual who doesn't even know me, is not from our locality, he came after I traveled back to Saudi Arabia, was spreading that I give talks in the masajid of Ahl Bidah, that I give lessons or lectures in the masajid of the people of desires and innovation. The first thing we have to look at, ayyul ahbab, aside from the sinfulness that he fell into, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him and guide, guide us and guide him, and forgive us and forgive him, is for one, who, from the likes of an individual like himself, as far as his knowledge and so forth, could determine the masajid that we have there in Seattle, Washington, are from the masajid of Ahl Bidah. For one, he's now made a hukum on the various masajid. Number two, another issue, as well, we've looked at this, uh, this issue with the ulama and explored it and researched it, that it is not impermissible that it is a permissible thing. Because how else can you spread the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah but to go to people who are not on the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if that were the case, that these were masajid, that were masajid, that were not the masajid of Ahl Sunnah, then even in that situation, as the ulama state, yabni ala maslah wa mafsada. O yandr ala mas maslah wa mafsada that we should look to the harms and the benefits. If there is a greater benefit in going to a, a masjid and there is no compromise in what you're speaking about, that you're allowed to speak about Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa minhaj salaf al-umma, salaf al-saleh, then that would be better for you. And perhaps greater ajr because you're spreading the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, لِيَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجْلٍ وَاحِدٍ خَيْرًا لَكَ مِنْ حَمْرَ النَّعْمٍ The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, if one person is guided by your hand, this is better for you than the red camels. And the red camels were the most uh, the, held in the highest esteem by the Arabs. It was considered one of their greatest forms of wealth. In that, in that time. Letting us know that other people's guidance is imperative. The shahid ayu al-ahbab is beware of spreading suspicion. Beware of speaking without knowledge. Beware of these wicked forms of uh, akhlaq, su'u al-akhlaq, that these are 
wicked forms of uh, akhlaq and mannerisms by spreading suspicion, by being suspicion of one another, by spying on one another. Who does so-and-so listen to? Who does he take knowledge from? Where, where was he? Where is he going? Who is he hanging around with? To make, uh, make that a large portion of your, your business, to research what other people are doing and not being conscious and concerned about your own sins is something that we have to be aware of because it only leads to vun, to, 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 to suwa vun, as the Prophet ﷺ said, the Prophet Ali said, and do not spy upon another, and do not cheat one another, and do not turn your backs on one another, and do not be suspicious of one another, but be brothers. And be brothers, uh, the, the brothers in the Islamic faith, the brothers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the mu'min should concern themselves with. And this is what righteous akhlaq is. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa sallam.